Hello guys and welcome to Singapore, the virtual version for another edition of F1 2015 Predicts, where we let the game's AI drivers entertain us with a race around the, uh, the track and essentially predict the outcome of the Singapore Grand Prix, uh, realistic or not. <laughs> so here we are on the grid, there's the Mercedes safety car and behind that two Mercedes Formula 1 cars, it's a front row lockout here on the game by the Mercedes drivers, with uh, Lewis Hamilton starting from pole this time ahead of uh, Nico Rosberg. And here we have the starting grid, there's a point you can get for Hulkenberg starting on his 16th, as well as Grosjean in 14th, and then we got Verstappen in 10th, Maldonado 9th, Ricardo, and Bottas then, quite disappointing for Bottas in 7th, Kvyat all the way up in the 6th, Vettel only 5th as well, and then uh, Felipe Massa is the best of the rest, you could say, uh, with uh, starting in 3rd. Not quite how it turned out in, the, in qualifying in real life, but you know, that's just how it rolls. I will be uh, chilling out at the back by myself in, in the Mary's Maru Manor Marusha once again to basically stay out of the way and uh, not affect the action at all. So it's time for the air drivers to provide us with another race here. Last time at Monza, of course, it was an absolutely crazy race. I don't think it'll be quite as crazy here in Singapore with the limited passing opportunities, but hopefully it'll be a fun one. So it's time to get racing. Will there be any first corner craziness to be had this time around? Looks like a good launch for Hamilton to stay ahead of uh, Rosberg going into turn 1. The Ferraris there going side by side through turn 1 with Vettel now on the outside of Raikkonen going through turn 3. Trying to hang it around the outside but doesn't look like he can get it done although they're still pretty much side by side. Vettel now with the inside line going into turn 4 or 5 actually and they're getting very close together. Oh Vettel! It was actually a bit of a touch there. Vettel not happy with his teammate there and Raikkonen pulling out a better exit coming down the straight but Vettel still hanging on in the battle for 4th place there. Oh, that touch again, I think. In the breaking zone for turn 7, Vettel still trying to hang on, and he's done an amazing job there to get around the outside, take the inside line for turn 8. But now Raikkonen is just doing the same back. How are they still side by side? I don't understand what is going on. Through turn 9 as well, side by side, who's going to come out on top? Raikkonen now with the inside line for the next corner, but Vettel with a better speed on the straight, and Vettel gets 4th place. Well, that battle has caused him a lot of time now. We got battling back at, at the back as well with Ericsson and Verstappen going side by side through the middle part of the lap. Verstappen seemingly pulling himself slightly ahead there going over the bridge and into turn 13. Ericsson though still holding on. Come on Marcus, do this for Scandinavia mate. Here he is now with a good run and now the inside line for the next corner. Pulling himself ahead of Verstappen. Surely he's got this now unless Verstappen goes around the outside and he's trying his best to do it. He's done an incredible job and to get a better exit as well. Verstappen seemingly takes in 10th place unless Ericsson can be an absolute hero here he's trying still to get ahead but eventually had to back off and uh, that battle as well costing the both of them quite some time to compare the group in front and there's a huge train now from 11th and down to the back of the field but uh, running uh, nicely out in front is Lewis Hamilton with a comfortable lead already after lap one over Nico Rosberg who also had a comfortable lead over uh, Bottas, I think, in uh, third. No, actually, it's Massa in third, my apologies, and Bottas is in sixth at the moment. And the Red Bull's also getting quite close together here, as we got a very <laughs> interesting camera angle there from uh, the rear wing of Daniel Kvyat facing uh, uh, forwards. So Kvyat, uh, who started in sixth, uh, currently in seventh, and leading the Red Bull pair at the moment. Based on the previous predicts races, you'd expect Ricardo to uh, have the edge on Kvyat, uh, and here he comes down the Raffles Boulevard to take the inside line for turn 7, Ricardo trying to pass his teammates, can Kvyat hold on like Vettel did earlier, and it can! Kvyat pulling out a much better exit there, and staying ahead of Ricardo, some <laughs> incredible battling here going on in the first uh, couple of laps, again the AI is showing us that they can uh, go side by side if they just can be bothered. And the Red Bull running 7th and 8th at the moment. I think we might see them higher up, of course, in uh, in real life. They've been looking good around there. And Nico Rosberg, as has been the case these days, not looking quite as good as Lewis Hamilton. So I guess it's appropriate he is uh, behind him at the moment. And the McLaren as well, kind of uh, holding on to the back of the midfield queue still. Obviously looking also better than usual around here as well in real life. With this not being quite a power circuit, you know, the engine... Uh, doesn't play as big a role as it's done on uh, some of the other races, uh, especially the two we've been at just before this, uh, Spa and Monza. But on this particular straight, the engine will matter as well as the DRS, which uh, Vettel now has on Felipe Massa. Ooh, I thought it was going to go for the overtake there, but it does decide to back out last minute. Uh, so did uh, Ricardo as well on Kvyat. Did not go for the move this time around on his teammate, and uh, the two Red Bulls now... Uh, holding on ahead of uh, Maldonado there in 9th uh, I think and then there's Verstappen in 10th as we uh, go on board with the Carlos Sainz currently running in 13th uh, behind Ericsson and uh, Perez. 
Now onto the start of lap 4, still looking at that battle between the Red Bulls and they are getting incredibly close together here, uh, Ricardo literally inside the rear ends of Daniel Kvyat almost, and now back to the battle between the Williams and the Ferrari, with uh, Raikkonen in 5th looking on as Vettel potentially charges down Massa on the straight air, can he get close enough this time? No, he cannot. Ricardo though again having a go at Kvyat every DRS and goes up inside the turn 7, this time much further ahead, can Kvyat Hold it around the outside this time as well. It's a much harder task, but he's done it. And now as the inside again, they're still side by side. This time Ricardo might do what Raikkonen did in lap one. And he does take the position finally to get up to seventh place. Huge gap ahead of him though, but Ricardo now uh, running as the best of the rest uh, behind the top six that obviously are in dominant cars as he stands. You know, based on real life at the moment, you'd kind of swap. Uh, Red Bull with Williams in terms of, in terms of pace here, I assume that we'll see a uh, Ferrari and Red Bull battle in the actual race tomorrow, and those two actually being ahead of the Mercedes as well should make it very interesting indeed. First time we've really seen Mercedes struggle this season to be honest, but uh, in this virtual race they are running well out right in front, meaning Williams and Ferrari will have to settle for a battle for a third, as they have done of course so many times earlier in the season. As a battle now is really closing in on Massa, coming towards turn 7 at the end of the DRS straight, taking that inside line, but it's not too far ahead, kind of squeezing Massa off a little bit there, but uh, Massa getting a much better run out of the corner to stay ahead for now. Massa really defending hard for that uh, third place position as we got more battling towards the back of the field. Oh, that, oh no, I thought I was there. Ricardo defending there, but Ricardo's pulled out a huge gap, and I was actually Kvyat defending from Maldonado to keep hold of 8th place here, so uh, Ricardo actually seems to have much better pace than Kvyat, has really pulled away and Kvyat uh, <laughs> under pressure from a Lotus and a Toro Rosso. And here we see the gap between the two Mercs, Hamilton with at least a couple of seconds worth of a gap there to Nico Rosberg, so he's looking very good for the win around here, unlike in real life where he's starting the race from 5th place on the grid, it's gonna be a lot harder for him to replicate that uh, uh, results in, in real life. And Ricardo as well running 7th here, he's starting the race from 2nd, so it's going to be a very interesting race tomorrow, kind of uh, Ferrari and Red Bull breaking the trend of uh, Mercedes in terms of uh, qualifying at least, hopefully they can keep it up in the race, it'd be nice to see a bit of difference, you know, obviously Vettel looks incredibly good uh, for the win in real life, but uh, you know, I don't want him to be dominated in the race, because you know, I want a fun close battle for the win, because we haven't seen one for absolute ages, uh, I feel like, but at the moment I'd rather have him dominate in the Ferrari than a Mercedes dominating again because we've seen that so many times this season. As we obviously saw Hamilton in the pit lane already, the first man to go in the pits and Felipe Massa as well, seemingly the only other driver to go in the pits after lap 6, so Hamilton now coming out of the pit lane, oh it's gonna be loads of cars around him, it's gonna come in to a lot of traffic here, that whole midfield a train going all the way back to the McLaren that is going to come out in the middle of that behind the Toro Rosso and just ahead of Felipe Nasser in that Sauber. Uh, Felipe Massa though uh, with a bit more clear air coming towards uh, right at the back of the pack uh, behind the manner of uh, Will Stevens. So where is Hamilton? This is surely going to hold him up because I remember oh was Nasser who is <laughs> sliding all over the place on the straight is Felipe Nasser and trying to pass Lewis Hamilton there but just couldn't get uh, around him it just was weaving behind him instead. And that is the last Hamilton would have needed, because uh, as I was going to say, uh, obviously Nico Rosberg is still running out in front in clean air in the lead at the moment. So Hamilton being held up by traffic, you're really close, the gap between them potentially. So maybe not the best uh, strategic decision from uh, Hamilton's side of the garage there. And uh, let's see also how the other, uh, uh, well, how the other Ferraris plus Bottas respond to Massa going in early as well. And you can see Hamilton still stuck in that gi ginormous train here, running 14th place at the moment, so obviously with all of them, you know, all the people around him not having pitches yet, and Ericsson right at the front of that train, it's a Marcus Ericsson train from 9th place downwards as he stands, obviously he's in a, uh, Ericsson is in a net 11th place here, taking the pit stops into account, and here we go then, Sebastian Vettel is that going into the pits, it is, and Raikkonen uh, goes around for another lap, Rosberg's in the pits, so Raikkonen's going to take the lead here, for uh, a little bit at least. So now we watch the track on the other side of the wall there. Where is that huge train with Lewis Hamilton in it going to be? Show that train is going to break up a little bit as well now with other cars coming into the pits. You see a Red Bull back there having pitted. Oh, and I think Bottas actually. Yep, Bottas has jumped Vettel in the pit stops. Vettel got held in his box there. That is not good for him. 
And here comes Rosberg again on the pit exit. Where is Lewis Hamilton? Oh, he's right there. They're right next to each other. Hamilton on the outside through turn three and pulls ahead on the exit. So that two second gap between them before the stops have completely closed down. And Vettel now behind both of the Williams. So pit stops have not worked out for him either. Hamilton though at least staying out ahead of his teammate but not as far ahead as he was. Oh, they're side by side as well ahead of Lewis Hamilton. Now that is a Torosso. Uh, Carlos Sainz, I think, as well as Sergio Perez going side by side, right ahead of Lewis Hamilton. And oh, there's a Williams battle going on as well. Massa uh, passing Bottas, it looks like, on the inside of turn 7 there. Can Bottas fight back? Massa's got half his car ahead at the moment and the inside line from the next corner. Bottas has to give up there. So Massa retakes his position as the lead Williams in the race. But that battling could potentially give uh, Raikkonen an advantage, who is still running out uh, in the lead in clean air. So it really comes down a lot to the pit stops in this race. As you'd expect, just the timing of the pit stops and how unlucky or lucky they are with regards to traffic. Because uh, normally in terms of strategy like this, you'd expect the undercut to provide a benefit. But that is unless they end up in traffic, because then you know the traffic can slow them down more than the tire advantage would gain them. And that is exactly what we're seeing here with uh, Lewis Hamilton. As Kimi Raikkonen now comes into the pit lane from the lead, as the Mercedes driver still behind Sergio Perez goes under the bridge, br under the grandstand, not the bridge. As my mouth uh, tries his best to keep me from saying words properly. Raikkonen nicely, a good clean uh, pit stop from the Ferrari boys by the looks of it, and the Mercedes are now going to retake their lead. But at least we might now have a battle on our hands. As Daniel Kvyat's gonna get held up massively here in the pit stops, getting jumped by several cars, although some of them surely will uh, go into their pit box now, so he might not have uh, lost out as much as it looked like. And Kimi Raikkonen has indeed jumped ahead of the group he was battling, he's ahead now of both the Williams and Vettel as well. So Kimi now, the man looking good for third place in this race, uh, obviously that's the same position. That's where, where he'll be starting in the actual race tomorrow. Verstappen goes sliding around turn two there and sneaks just ahead of Pastor Maldonado on the exit. So he has jumped him in the pit stop and Sergio Perez getting very close to his teammate Hülkenberg there as well, but losing out. And now he's got Fernando Alonso over him. Alonso running in 14 at the moment, so he is getting three positions through the pit stop phase. Wanted to have a look at Perez there, but let's be honest, so that Honda engine is not going to catch them. Mercedes engines down the straight, but uh, Hülkenberg going right on the attack on the Red Bull there of Daniel Kvyat, and Kvyat has indeed lost out, he's down to 12th, he was running 8th previously, which means that uh, ahead of Hulkenberg there is Marcus Ericsson, who has gained a position, and is now running up into the points in 10th place, which is kind of a position Ericsson has made his own in recent races in real life, he's finished 10th uh, tenth, tenth and 9th I think in the three re uh, most recent races, so maybe there's another 10th place on the cards here if the game is anything to go by for the Scandinavian, you know, I'm kind of cheering a little bit for Marcus Ericsson because he's Scandinavian, like myself, even though uh, I would rather have Kevin Magnussen in there as uh, my main person to cheer for. But now Ericsson is getting under pressure for that 10th place by Nico Hülkenberg, who's going up the inside and they're going side by side. Come on Marcus, you can hold on. I do like Hülkenberg as well, of course, but uh, gotta be cheering on my neighbor countryman a little bit. Hülkenberg is looking good here though to make the pass, they're going so close together through there. Now coming towards that uh, corner that used to be the triple chicane, is now with just a really fast left-hander. And they're going so close together and they've touched the first contact we've seen in the race, proper contact anyway. And Hülkenberg has gone sliding into the wall, lost his front wing after tapping the side of Marcus Eriksson Sauber. So that is essentially the race over. For Nico Hülkenberg here, to be honest, he's never going to recover from this in the five and a bit laps that is remaining. Especially as he's going to have to make his pit stop now as well. Ericsson though seemingly staying in 10th, uh, not getting affected by that at all. So that's kind of nice. Uh, <laughs> but uh, sorry to any Nico Hülkenberg fans out there, this is not going to be your race, I'm afraid. But we have now skipped a little bit on to uh, lap uh, 13. It's only three laps remaining in the race. And I feel like the gap has closed down slightly between Hamilton and Rosberg. But Hamilton still has a decent gap uh, ahead of Rosberg and has not looked to be threatened all race uh, apart from just uh, after the pit stops when Res Rosberg came out of the pits. But he's getting pretty close there. Oh, look how, how he's closing with the DRS. He's gone up the inside. There's a move going on for the lead here. Rosberg has taken it for Hamilton and Hamilton not able to fight it at all. He was basically passed before they even turned into the corner there. Uh, and you know, Hamilton not putting up as good a fight as we've seen other drivers in this race do. Uh, so 
you know, Rosberg has taken the lead here, quite surprisingly I have to say, after seemingly not having the pace at all in Hamilton in the first uh, stint anyway, but obviously now running on one lap pressure tyres, maybe that has something to do with it. I bet that Rosberg would wish that this race but that was actually the real life one, uh, rather than the one that's going to happen to yes, uh, tomorrow. So that's going to be a hard one for him. Here comes oh, Bottas going for the move into turn one here. We've not seen a move there all race, but Bottas trying to pass his teammate here. And Massa though, fighting back, holding on around the outside of turn three, but not able to stay alongside Bottas, shoving him a little bit to the right there as well. To take fourth place with Vettel just looking on, not able to threaten the Williams drivers at the moment. But let's see if Massa is able to come straight back on Bottas there, because this is, of course, another DRS zone. And he does go for it, Massa looking to the inside of turn seven. We've seen so many overtaking moves here, as you'd expect, so with the being the longest straight and with DRS as well. And Bottas though, oh yeah, he, he does uh, keep hold of the position there. So Massa unable to get that position back, and uh, maybe that's uh, that fight done then because Bottas uh, seemed to have better pace uh, throughout the race. It's been kind of massa holding people up so far. As Herr Eriksson is under pressure again, this time from Daniel Kvyat, who goes for the inside. Are we going to see a repeat of uh, Eriksson's battle with Hulkenberg, resulting in some contact at the end of it? He's certainly not fighting any less here, but Kvyat holding it around the outside of turn 8 and shoving Marcus wide on uh, the exit there. So Marcus is dropping out of the points there. And Kvyat up into the points, into 10th. I think it's gonna look a lot better for him in real life to be honest, obviously he's starting from 4th, a good qualifying from him, even though he could have been better to be honest, he was looking quicker than Ricardo at times during the, se the, the qualifying sessions, but uh, couldn't quite beat him, I think he's certainly looking good for a potential podium tomorrow, I think it'll depend on mainly how good the race pace Mercedes has and also whether uh, Kimi will have another meltdown from a podium position, as he had in Monza of course uh, when he messed up the start. But the Mercs here have just started the final lap and these guys are about to as well. Oh, and I think Massa might well be under pressure again going into turn one. Vettel trying to repeat of what Bottas just did earlier and he looks to be pulling it off. He is almost fully ahead and Massa trying to fight back once again but he's just not able to hold it around the outside of turn three there. Vettel doing a good job to get ahead there but uh, obviously I think he'll be looking for a lot more in real life tomorrow. He is the absolute favorite for uh, for the win I think after his dominance in qualifying but here he's gonna be under pressure from Massa who might be getting the position back. He was weaving a lot before deciding to go up the inside there but Vettel again doing what Boss does this uh, and holding on around the outside. Massa's race not being particularly good there and ooh, they've got uh, Daniel Ricciardo actually not far behind either so Ricciardo has really been catching these guys uh, you know you wouldn't expect that because the Red Bull doesn't quite have the pace on this game compared to the Williams and the Ferrari even though it should be pretty decent around here with uh, this layout suiting the Red Bull quite a bit in terms of uh, it having good downforce as we see Ericsson under pressure once again this time it's from Sergio Perez who will probably want some revenge for his teammates obviously it was put in the wall earlier and Perez pulling off a similar move to what Kvyat did or is he? Yes I think Ericsson might just have to back out here Perez just about sneaking ahead and Ericsson demoted now to 12th place a little bit of a disappointment for him uh, even uh, you know, considering he was on the course for a, a points place. But Nico Rosberg though, this is what matters, comes around the final corner to take the win here. Uh, Lewis Hamilton could not come back from being overtaken a few laps from the end. So Rosberg wins this uh, F1 2015, predicts race, uh, you know, I don't think we'll see a repeat of that tomorrow in all, not all honesty. But you never know, uh, as Kimi Raikkonen comes home in, home in third air as well, you know, I think he'll be relatively pleased with that tomorrow probably, even though knowing Kimi he won't really be properly happy until he wins, but um, yeah. Uh, Ricardo not able to get past Mass in the end, so has to settle for 7th with uh, Vettel in 5th and Bottas in 4th as well. And here comes Max Verstappen to take 8th place, solid for him, a silent but good race here. And then Pastor Maldonado as well, coming down in 9th place, you know, I'm sure he would love some points tomorrow as well. And Kvyat, after passing Ericsson a few laps from the end, takes that final pole point position. Ericsson well, holds on just ahead of Alonso, who actually gets a 13th, I think, a decent result for the McLaren. Also one I'm kind of looking at tomorrow in real life as a one with an outside chance after at some points, but really in terms of the final few point positions, you just can't predict it. Anyone could finish in like 9th and 10th to be honest, you know, you have the McLarens, the Toro Rossos, the Force Indias, the Lotuses, the Saubers, all of them could potentially get it, as we just see me uh, weaving across the line there, because, you know, it's fun and stuff. Uh, <laughs> so there we have the results then of the virtual version of the Singapore Grand Prix. 
not too much to say to be honest, I mean you got the results when we were watching the race, so uh, it was uh, a pretty fun race, not quite as action packed and crazy as the Italian Grand Prix last time out, but considering it's Singapore, a very tight track with uh, not too many overtaking places, we did get more, more action than I probably expected to be honest, so um, good fun once again. And uh, now it's up to you then to let me know your top 5 predictions in the comments below for the real life race tomorrow. And now to reveal the uh, commenter who predicted the closest last time out for the Italian Grand Prix with 4 out of 5 drivers in their correct positions. It is Clumsy Spore 946 who predicted Hamilton Vettel, Bottas and Kimi all in their correct positions. Uh, didn't quite have a, a Massa in third, should have swapped him with Rosberg, but that prediction was the closest out of everyone, so let's see if you can get even better than that and get 5 out of 5 this time around for the Singapore Grand Prix, even though I think that'll be quite tricky, but I'm sure you'll give it your best shot. Uh, and uh, that's it from me really, from this F1 2015 predicts video. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope uh, you'll have fun in the real race tomorrow as well. And uh, see you later. Only one week until Japan. <laughs> Goodbye.